It's another mailbag. What's in these boxes? And bags. And envelopes. Ah, okay. These are bridge rectifiers. 2W10. So these I actually got originally for the Datron multimeters because I replaced one of the original bridge rectifiers because it's blown and I used my very last one of this particular size so I bought a stock of them. The 10 was for 1000 volt, you know, it did be data sheet, I'll, I'll stick an overlay of that. And um, yeah, so like I said, this is for the Datron, the 1062s is the original reason I purchased these and um, yeah, I mean there's a common things to use and having a stock of these is always a really good thing to do because you never quite know you're going to need a bridge rectifier, you know. It's always a good thing to have. So I think I've got about 20 of them, something like that. There'll be links for these things down below. Always check the links out, it helps the channel. Anything you purchase through the links through AliExpress or Banggood or, you know, even um, Amazon if you use my Amazon links too, it helps to support the channel. All goes towards it and helps me to buy more things and now it's getting actually a bit of test gear as well. I buy a decent test gear to, to, uh, to do repairs on, such as the Datrons. I've been playing on my camera setup as well recently. Oh, this sort of focus might be a pain. Anyway, um, yeah, I've been playing on my camera setup recently, trying to improve the quality slightly more. And I'm just switched on auto focusing again as well, just to see if I can get this to work differently. Because I've, I've changed the settings on that as well, to see if I can get more reliability out of that. Ah, right, this is a Wi Fi module. So this is an, I think it's an ESP8266 that's on there. Can't quite see, it's upside down for a start. Dunno, anyway, it's a little module. This is for my 3D printer. So this is like a standard module which you can actually get off the shelf. And these are also used on things like Ender 3s, like the Big Tree Tech upgrades. The SKR Mini, um, the TFT version 3, whatever it is I think it is, has got a section where you can plug this module in. And even, I think the SKR Mini E3 might even have a section on the main board for it, actually. I'm not sure. Anyway, I know the TFT's got a spot for it. So, this means you can hook it onto Wi-Fi and put it on network and uh, monitor it remotely and stuff like that. But I thought I'd give it a go, just have a play around with it. You know, just check it out. It's cheap. Yeah, a couple of bucks and like It wasn't that expensive at all. I got it directly from Big 2 Tech from the website. Because I wanted to make sure I got one which was definitely compatible. So, anyway, yeah, it's probably it all look the same anyway. I don't really think it matters that much. So let me know what you think about the changes I've made to the camera settings and things like that. I was trying to up the quality a little bit. I, I don't know, maybe what I had before wasn't too bad. I, I, give me your opinion. I, I spent a lot of time on it previously trying to improve it. Um, maybe auto-focusing, which is what I'm doing right now. Maybe that's a mistake. Um, I don't know. Anyway, and it's some more modules. These are variable buck regulators. Five of these. I've featured these previously as well. Can I focus on that? Yes it is, there we go. So you see it's adjustable there. This is very similar to another one which I've shown previously, but that the other one has a resistor instead of a variable. So it's very similar, but different. Similar but different. Yeah, the other one I showed before had a fixed resistor value just here, instead of those empty pads, and that wasn't populated. So instead of having a visitor here to make a variable one over here, those linked together. So you can make it adjustable buck regulator or a fixed buck regulator by inserting a resistor. So quite a versatile little design that board. It's quite nice. And it's a really cheap to get, well relatively cheap, very handy for projects and work things you're working on. I've used these things quite a bit recently. So the big links for these obviously. Also playing around with some new overlays as well, like little pop-up overlays, you might see them like I don't know, maybe I'll do one now. Um, little subscription reminders and things like that and link reminders. Just trying to up the ground the game a little bit and make it look a bit more Professional, I suppose. Alright, some test clips. These took a while to arrive, as is a lot of things actually at the moment. It's not usually the seller's fault, they'll send them pretty quickly, but the mail system is currently, I don't know, bogged down or very slow or something. Maybe, you know, lack of flights in between countries is a problem. Anyway, so we've got some little test clips, little, uh, little grabbers. Let's get a bit closer. See, got a little grabber here. Not very well lined up on the tips, but it probably doesn't matter too much. Let's try another one. It's also not very well lined up. 
Maybe it's the way I designed them. Maybe they're meant to be like that. Uh, anyway, so this is your standard G-Pont connectors. Put pins there like that. So, thought it'd be a handy thing to have. I've got some other ones as well somewhere. But I was working on something, I needed some little mini grabbers for that and I... I don't know what it was for now actually. I don't know what I was going to work on. Anyway, I, I think maybe I was going through a phase when I was buying mini grabbers because I bought the other set as well, those other little micro ones with those little shafts on. Maybe I saw these when I was buying those and thought, oh, I'll get some of those too because they're kind of things that are handy to have when you're trying to clip onto ICs and debug things. Sometimes it's easier to put a little clip on something and have that hang off there than trying to probe it with your oscilloscope and stuff like that. You know, because you're actually pretty sure you can shove your scope probe into one of these. Let's find out, actually. Let's get a scope probe. Any random probe will do. This one. Which happens to be a single probe. Will it shove in there? It will. Alright, so yes, you can shove your scope probe into one of these Dupont connectors. Whoever it will make a good connection on it, I don't know. It does tend to be a little bit loose there. It's only like kind of just in there. A bit, a bit flaky, really. Probably the way to do that is actually put a male header on this end and um, then just clip on with a, with a hook clip on the scope probe. But anyway, waffling a little bit. Let's see what's in the box here. I've got no idea. Could be anything. Multi channel sensor. Oh, I think these were for my weather station. Yes, they are. So these are some more indoor sensors from a weather station. I did the review on this. Uh, by the time you see this, probably a couple of months ago, actually. I'm quite far ahead of my videos right now. And I actually had some sensors like this already. I've got, I've got two more. So it came with one of these sensors already, the actual unit. So this is the MySoul HB2550, sunlight, is it? I think it's sunlight, anyway. But the Mitesaw Weather Station did a review, and I'll, I'll probably link it in up, up there or maybe down in the description. And I wanted to supplement the sensors, so I've got some more sensors around the house and in other areas. So I want to put a sensor in my garage and my other rooms out there, and another one in another spot in the house. So I've, I can get temperatures from inside in a couple of different places. So yeah, I just wanted to get some more. And these ones are like replacement ones. The ones that came with it didn't have a selector and this one obviously does have a selector so you can choose the channel number it's going to be on. Um, I guess I have to figure that out. I might have to even configure it. Mm. Anyway, yeah, there's no instructions of course. There you go, there's a model number HP2550. I didn't remember it right. It's quite obvious really. Mm. Don't know what's in here, it's fairly big. Thanks on Patreon supporters. If you haven't been here before as well, make sure you give me a, a subscribe and a thumbs up if you like the video. If you like my videos, always give me a thumbs up. It does help the channel quite a bit. And um, if you're interested in helping support the channel, helping to buy things from Mailbag or help bits of test gear to fix, um, then please do consider becoming a Patreon if you've got some, you know, a spare dollar or two a month. That's all it takes. Doesn't take much. I mean, if one percent of my subscribers donated. Two dollars a month, I could buy a new piece of Tesco every month. Wouldn't that be brilliant? You know, every month I could do a new piece of Tesco repair. Anyway, so we've got some modules which are suspiciously like ones I've already got actually. Mm. Um, Three point five inch TFTs, SPI TFTs. They're similar but different. Let's open one up. So yes, they do have touchscreen. It's got a stylus. We've got the pins on the end here. There you go, there's a pin out on the end. So these are the touch sensing, so these are optional. If you don't want to use touch, you don't have to use any of those. And basically it's SPI interface. So the reason I've got this is because I'm looking at doing an upgrade to one of my existing projects, where I'm currently using an OLED display. It does have SPI, but the OLED's currently configured for I2C. It's one of the ones I converted from SPI to I2C, because that's what I wanted to use. Now the particular item I'm working on doesn't actually need to use it I squared C, it can use SBI, it's not restricted. So there's no reason why I couldn't swap it over to SBI. 
but I need a bigger display. These the displays I've got currently are, I think they're 64 by 128, something like that. Whereas these are 480 by 320, which gives me much more flexibility in display features. So the current issue I've got is that I want to display a lot of text on the screen. And only text, it's always got a display is text. But I can't fit enough text on the screen because it all overwrites itself. It wraps around to the next line, stuff like that. So I think, all right, if I get a bigger screen with a larger um, dimension, in, in a pixel size, I could probably um, fit it all onto a bigger screen. And being touch means I may even be able to do like an interface on this thing and have this as a touch screen so I can do selections and do configurations of the actual unit. So, yeah. I need to play with this quite soon, actually. Quite soon indeed. So, yeah, there'll be links for these down below. Um, as always, I, I put links down for most of the things I have here. And, uh, yeah, I've been quite looking forward to getting stuck into doing Tesco repairs. I've had a few things recently. I've been quite enjoying that. And that's with the help from my supporters, you know, from people which give me a, you know, financial support directly on Patreon and my sponsors as well, like PC Way and affiliate accounts. You know, all my affiliate earnings as well from like Banggood and AliExpress or Teespring, that all goes towards it and it's really helpful. My channel is doing quite well right now, it's good. It's growing nicely, it's doing the things I want it to be doing. I just want, like, as most people would, I just want a little bit more money. I want to buy more test gear. And, you know, the stuff I like to try and buy is getting expensive too. You know, I'm talking around a thousand dollars most of the time these days. Maybe a bit more. Sometimes I want to go even further than that. I mean, there's things I do want to get which are like two grand. But yeah, that's that's just out of my out of my financial status. I mean, right now I'm, I'm saving up and buying something. Saving up and buying something. You don't need me waffling about money, do you? Probably not. So let me know down below in the comments what you think about the new overlays, the camera setup. If you think it's better or worse. Um, obviously it's the same view but I've tried to change the camera settings to make it a bit crisper I'm also exporting my videos in a higher resolution than was before well same resolution but the um, a higher bit rate the videos are physically larger so I'm playing with that right now so let me know what you think about in this video and future ones as well after this point will also be the same so I've only just, just changed literally this weekend I've decided to make some changes and try and up it a little bit more and just get slightly better photography out of it, slightly more professional. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just try up the game a little bit, you know. More quality than quantity kind of thing, that's what I'm aiming for now. I was doing quantity over quanti quality a little bit. You know, trying to do three videos a week, four videos a week sometimes. It meant I was just trying to churn through things, but now I'm trying to actually up the game a little bit more. And probably put some more effort into each individual video and publish a few less, you know, each month or whatever. Right well, now I'm trying to target doing two videos a week. You may have already noticed I've been doing this for some time. And this is giving me a little bit more time to do things. So even though I'm only doing two videos a week, that reduction freed me up a little bit. So I can actually put a bit more effort into doing each video and try and get the editing side of it a bit nicer. And trying to get the quality a bit nicer. So that's what I'm working on. So thanks for sticking with me. And thanks for everyone's support. If you know, give me a thumbs up. Even that is support. So, you know, that sort of thing. Any support I can get is, is really appreciated. Don't forget to check out the videos at the end as well. I've got some end screens up here somewhere. You know, playlists, other, other mailbag videos if you like mailbag. Maybe some repair videos, stuff if you like those. You know, I've, I've got loads of playlists. I've got dozens and dozens of playlists of different things. You know, certain bits of test gear. It could be Apple repairs. Or it could be just general electronic stuff or whatever. Lots of playlists. So go and watch some more of my stuff. Because that also helps my channel quite a bit. If, so if you go on from watching this video to watching one more of my videos, if you just watch two of my videos together, that is actually a good signal to YouTube you like the content, and it'll help them to push the channel a bit more. So all those little things help, you know, I think, you know, I just come watch one video, well, if you can watch two videos, that would be even better. Just saying. Hopefully I'll catch you down in the comments down below and have a chat. Catch you later. Bye.